In the following clip, Controlla outlines her experience with public figure Jean Grey, a.k.a. That Melissa, a.k.a. Melissa Carlin. It's important to note that much of the bullying, harassment, and organized stalking Controlla contends with stems directly from Melissa. If nobody believes me, like, yo, that Melissa girl, that, that girl could have killed me. I don't, I'm, and I'm, this is real rap. Like, this isn't even like on some like dumb shit. What that girl Melissa did, what that girl Melissa did, I could have died. I don't care what anybody fucking says. And I'm going to, I'm going to lay it out for you. I'm going to lay it out for you real fucking simple like this. Okay. Melissa knew that I was relapsing. She knew that I was relapsing. She knew, she knew I was in a relapse. She knew I was in a fucking relapse and she used that to her benefit. She manipulated that fact. What up, Kelso? She started feeding me hundreds and hundreds of pills. She got me accustomed to hundreds of milligrams of methadone a day. And then she snatched them from me. And when I told her, oh my God, I don't have any methadone. I'm going to do dope. Her response was, that's usually how it happens. Now, yes, it was my decision to take those drugs, but who, who willingly and for free gives somebody all those drugs if they're not, you know, if they're not trying to harm them? This person helped me relapse and fall really fucking far. And she did all of this with my baby girl there. She did all this. She came to my house while I was nodding out and still handed me more pills. Tell me again that this person didn't have a fucking death wish for me. Here are Navy SEALs' three rules for surviving a real-world assault. Rule number one, always fight dirty. If you're assaulted by a criminal, you stand no chance of surviving if you're acting like it's a martial arts tournament. Arts are your best chance to survive. My martial arts mentor proved this point to me by throwing dirt in my face when I was least expecting it. And that's why I surprised my friend here. So you can see how unexpected dirty moves like this can end the fight before it begins. And that's exactly why I don't train in martial arts. If you train in martial arts, you're with more Fox News contributor and media and politics columnist for The Hill, Joe Concha. Uh, great to see you, Joe. All right. So, you know, remember cool. when when Democrats favorite water cooler topic of conversation was how the president won the election due to Russian disinformation? I guess that claim yeah. didn't age all that well. No, it hasn't. And, you know, if this was a movie, we call it after the fact, Julie, right? Because the central character in all this has been Russia ever since 2016 in that election. So, for instance, oh, there was Russian collusion between Trump allies and the Kremlin. No, that never happened. Oh, there were Russian bounties on U.S. troops and Trump ignored it. No, that never happened. And now, oh, Russian bots, the Russians in general, through Twitter, through Facebook, impacted the 2016 election to the point it got Donald Trump over the finish line. And now we know there's no evidence around that. The problem here is all this reporting had a tremendous impact in terms of the minds of Democratic voters, for example. YouGov did a poll after the 2016 election, and they mm -hmm. found that nearly seven in 10, Julie, seven yeah. in 10 Democratic voters yep. actually believe that Russia did get Donald Trump elected. Talk about election denial. That was the original process. And given all the reporting that was right. going on, it was well, hard to blame some exactly, voters for coming to that conclusion. Exactly. Because the mainstream media pushed that exact narrative every single day. And if you didn't actually yeah. know your stuff, you would believe it to be true. The new study uh, that you're referring to, it suggests that the effect of Russian disinformation in the 2016 election was overhyped. Democrats claimed it helped propel Trump to victory. There's an NYU study that finds this. Only 1% of Twitter users accounted for 70% of those exposed to Russian troll accounts. Highly partisan Republicans were exposed nine times more frequently than non-Republicans. And last but definitely not least, the study found disinformation had no measurable impact on voter attitudes or behavior. Why do you think that is? Well, it's pretty logical. I mean, let's think about this for a second. You're 
going to vote in, in 2016, and your choices are Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, you want to talk about a contrast in policy, in style, in swamp versus non-swamp. You yeah. want to talk about all the differences between these people, and you really think some bots or a couple of ads on Facebook is going to make people change their minds from Hillary Clinton to Donald Trump? I, it is just, there's no logic, and there never has been any logic, uh, yet the reporting went forward uh, because it generated clicks and it generated ratings, and now we're not going to see any apologies from the Washington Post or New York Times editorial boards or all the people like Rachel Maddow that pushed this on MSNBC right. or all the folks uh, on CNN. We're not going to see it. It's, it's hey, it's, it's, we're already petting and let's move on. I mean, do you see a theme here? Whenever Democrats want to blame anything, they blame Russia, right? I mean, they blamed Russia for yeah. Trump winning the election. Now the president blames Russia for our gas prices and all our other economic woes here in this country. I guess uh, we should um, talk to Putin and ask him what to do with uh, the documents that they just found in Delaware. Maybe he planted them. Yeah, perhaps, right? And the thing is, Russia has, what, an economy the size of New York State, yeah. right? We see their military is like the Vermont National Guard when it comes to them going into Ukraine. So Russia, who was portrayed as being this most powerful enemy, the number one country we should keep an eye on, turns out Mitt Romney was right, right? Uh, that, no, it's not Russia as our number one enemy. Yeah. It clearly is China as our number one adversary. And guess who may or may not be compromised in that country due to his son's shady dealings with influence peddling there? Uh, the name is Biden. Yeah. OK. Uh, I want to talk about that potential gas stove ban burning up of the news this week. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> We've been uh, seeing days of backlash, obviously, and brutal ridicule after the Consumer Product Safety Commission floated the ban due to health and environmental concerns. Well, the White House really wants to go away. He wants to get as far away from this issue as possible. Watch. I asked about this gas stove thing that kind of bubbled up yesterday. Um, does the White House think gas stoves are, are safe? I am not looking to ban gas stoves, and the C CPSC has no, proceed has no proceedings to do so. Okay, so they did support it, but now they're backpedaling, of course. But even if the White House doesn't support the ban, some liberal celebs seem to. Actors like uh, Mark Ruffalo tweeting, we love our induction cooktop, in addition to not burning gas in the House. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez also mocking conservatives' criticism. Watch. I do think it's funny, the like absolute utter Republican meltdown, where they're like, you can take my gas stove or my cold dead hands or how dare you talk about gas stoves you have a gas stove first of all first of all i rent period second of all though it doesn't even matter because by that logic these are the same people who would have said we should have never gotten rid of leaded gasoline um an op-ed arguing banning gas stoves and going electric only is part of left's agenda um OK, I do believe that those stoves that they're trying to advocate for, uh, Joe, are really expensive. Yeah. And I do believe that electric cars are really expensive. And this seems to be the way of the Democrat and the liberal uh, elite. You know, they don't want to spend money. They want no taxes on the middle class. But yet they do want you to spend more money to save the environment. Which is it? It's a lot of conflicting messages coming from the left. Let's label this segment the logical segment, Julie, because we seem to be common sense people, right? And, and in this case, look at what California wants to do. By 2035, they will not sell anything but electric cars in that state. And you think about, okay, let's say I'm single Joe for a moment and I live in an apartment complex in Los Angeles. How exactly am I charging my car? And oh, by the way, at last check, there's a lot of traffic on I-5 and other highways around Los Angeles and San Francisco and San Diego. So let's say my charge runs out. What do we do then? So again, it's all these aspirational dreams of let's go green, but there's no logic behind how you get from point A to point B. And meanwhile, energy prices are still far higher than they were two years ago. So the time to do this transition certainly is not warranted. And again, how do you do it? You can talk about why it's so great, but until you answer the how, don't even bring it up at this point. And, and AOC, by the way, can anybody sound more like a Ridiculous. sophomore on Instagram than she does? I mean, pass some legislation, which you've never done in your career. It's just, it, it, after a while, it's like, what are these people doing? I mean, I thought they're supposed to be passing laws and getting things done, but she just seems to play on social media all day. I know. I think she's trying to play to the young people who are out going to go now and believe this and go buy induction stoves that they can't afford. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Joe Concha, thank you very much. We appreciate you coming on. 
I will see you tomorrow, I believe, right on the big Saturday show at 5 yes, p.m. We'll Eastern time. Yes, we'll be watching, time. absolutely. Nope. Hey, everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. In the following clip, Trisha Licious admits that she utilized physical violence to punish her child while she was live streaming and intoxicated. It's important to keep in mind that scientific studies have proven time and time again that children who are spanked tend to get worse over time. That's what the fuck I motherfucking did, bitch. And when people, when that fucking cunt wanted to run her mouth on me and say that I, for so long, for months and months, and say that I fucking smacked my kid in the face, I smacked my kid in the face when literally I was off camera and I was in the other room and I did pull her pants down and swat her behind three times. I did do it. I swatted her behind. Children who are spanked tend to get worse over time. Research suggests that spanking increases a child's risk of becoming more antisocial and distressed. Kids are also more likely to develop negative relationships with their parents. one of the funnest comedians around now starring in an animated film called cars which i'm in too it comes out on the 9th uh he also appears in blue collar comedy tour one for the road on comedy central june 4th please welcome larry the cable guy larry come on out Thanks for putting on a clean t-shirt for the show. Well, I appreciate that. I figured I'd dress up. Patricia's here, so. Yeah. Do you know, you know each other? You know what? Uh, no, I do not, but I love that show you're on. Thank you. I love your stuff, too. The, uh, uh, Albertson's commercial. <laughs> no, everybody loves Raymond. I'll tell you what, I see that every night at 4 30. <laughs> and then again at 5, and then 7 05, and 7 35, and 9 15. It's not a lot. Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you what, everybody loves Raymond all around the dial. Now, what's new with you, speaking of? <laughs> and you guys are always eating on that show. Yeah, it's an Italian family. You cook, or mom cooked. I actually watched the show with my pants on snap. That's yeah. how I say it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is good because uh, Friends is usually on after. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? You got any other TV shows in the works? You know what? I am working on a deal here. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these reality shows to me ain't really reality. Really? I mean, they don't act, they're not reality shows. So I come up with one. We're going to. Try to do this. You put a feller in the Ozarks, okay. and he's got five days to get out of the Ozarks yeah. with two horny hillbillies after. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna call that show Squeal or No Squeal. Really? <laughs> that would be a reality show. That'd be a good show right there. That's right. You know what? Can I let me? You're yeah. always doing these headlines. Right. Yeah. And I come. I got one for you here. You brought one for me. Check that now. Oh, this is two people getting married? Oh, that's funny. Nancy uh, Dunn and Harry Gitter. And look, it's the <laughs> Gitter Dunn wedding! Gitter Dunn wedding! Gitter Dunn wedding! Gitter Dunn wedding! Which is good, because it's a good thing your name weren't Goddard Prague. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Now, you're just back from Las Vegas. I mean, you seem like a Vegas kind of guy. Well, you, like you know what, Jay? Uh, I got to tell you what I was. I'm trying to get into another money-making deal there. Yeah. You know that store, Bed Bath & Beyond? Yeah, well, sure, sure. I'm coming up with one called Bed, uh, Bed Beer & Blonde. 
Dead beer in the blunt, yeah. You know, I don't know if it'll work or not, but yeah. uh, but no, I I enjoy Vegas. We was out there, stayed at the Hooters Casino. Hooters Casino? That's right. <laughs> oh, it was nice. A yeah. buddy of mine got in trouble for going all in on a dealer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere near it, all right? I was playing a slut machine for an yeah, hour. Yeah, I was playing a slut machine. Wow. But, no, I'm not a big gambler. No. I'm going to tell you. Uh, uh, remember them fellers that won the lottery? I started playing the lottery after they won all that money, but Jesus. I got to tell you what. Now, this is crazy. <laughs> you are very beautiful. Uh, uh, but uh, the, those fellers that won the lottery, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there was a lottery was up to $370 million dollars in Florida, and there's a fella next to me goes, boy, I tell you what, I, I really need that money. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you really need $370 million? <laughs> Good Lord, what kind of trouble you got yourself in there? <laughs> Good night, nurse. You know what I seen yeah. in Las Vegas? <laughs> Those candy cigarettes. Oh, I remember those. You remember them when yeah, we yeah, was yeah. kids and yeah. little candy cigars mm -hmm. and cigarettes? Right. Well, they had some of them, and, and this is how times have changed. I mean, you yeah. can barely find them anywhere anymore. Right. My sister loved those. She ate, she ate two packs of those little candy cigarettes a day, <laughs> and I actually got secondhand diabetes. Really? Yes, I did. Secondhand diabetes. Yes, I did. Wow. But here's how hypocritical yeah. it is. They yeah. get rid of these candy cigarettes, but they keep pixie sticks. Oh, I remember those. What sure. kind of a message is that? Don't smoke, but go ahead and do powder through a straw. Go ahead and do <laughs> That's real, much. It doesn't make sense. Now, I know you're traveling a lot. You got your big bus, the gas prices. That's going to be here. Near the gas oh, place. gas is unbelievable. Yeah. I actually seen a street gang doing a walk-by. <laughs> <laughs> Expensive. I guess it's averaged out now, $3 a gallon yeah, around right. the country. I mean, I wouldn't buy wine for $3 a gallon. <laughs> <laughs> so it's expensive. That'd be crazy. Yeah. Ugh, be nuts. <laughs> but uh, buddy of mine's anniversary's coming up, and he can't decide whether to get her diamond earrings or 10 gallons unleaded. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now, your wife is expecting. Congratulations. It's yeah, exciting, thank yeah. you. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Uh, this is uh, going to be our first one. You know, we ain't trying to repopulate like some people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> now, how about your wife? I imagine she's not getting any younger. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she'll come out here and kick your ass. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you, did you do the ultrasound? Do you... you know what? We did do that ultrasound. I got to tell you something. We seen the... the just look right to you. I, you yeah, know, I picture want to baby. show, show you the ultrasound. Wow, look at this. Kids' head is compared to the rest of the people. We're going to have to have a little talk after the show here. <laughs> Sound like the talking's all done, actually. <laughs> now, you're in cars. How did you get the part? Tell me about that. Well, you know what? Uh, this movie's unbelievable. I'm going to tell you how I got the part of Mater. They told me they. Mater? Mater is the name of my character, yeah. Mater. And it's a tow truck. And I got the part. They told me when I originally went out for the part, they said, well, it's a very likable and loving character, only it looks a little goofy. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, that means it's between me or you. Right. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but, I'm glad you got it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, no, I, yeah, I ended up getting it. But uh, How'd you prepare for the part? How'd you prepare for the world? You know, it was really bizarre. He told me I was going to play a tow truck in this, car, in this movie, and I actually had put on 1,700 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> So I've actually lost some weight. Yeah, yeah, and, I was say, uh, yeah. You look, you look like you're having the baby yourself. Yeah, I put on, yeah. yeah. <laughs> put on 1,700 pounds until I realized it was a cartoon, and yeah. I felt like an idiot. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So I enjoyed. It. I actually got it. Uh, to be honest with you, I got it because uh, uh, John Laster told me that they were looking for this voice. They went through about. 150, 200 people, they couldn't find a voice. And he goes, well, go get that blue collar CD and see who's on there. I've never heard of some of these guys. And uh, the first one up there, of course, was me. And he goes, man, who is that guy? He goes, "Get call that guy up. That's my tow cool. truck. So that's how I got the part of the oh, tow cool. truck. Oh, cool. Well, we have a clip. Neat. Here's you as the tow truck. Let's take a look. Some cars. <laughs> 